I'm going to do another few drawings now of the images from my trips that I use for the workshops to distill qualities and explain those qualities through drawings. And I'll pick a couple of the photos that appear to be quite popular. Um, I put them on the table at the start of the workshop and people come and choose them and sit down and look at them and then talk about them at the introductions. So this one here is probably fairly obviously a popular image. It's a very um, beautiful photo, quite a well-known, um, the Bika Funicular in Lisbon. Um, and this one here is of a street in Tokyo. I tried to Google Earth at once. I had a student who said, oh, my girlfriend lives near there. It's in an area called Asakasa or Asakasa, Asakasa. It's near the Shinjoji Temple. And I quite liked it when I walked past it because it was a public space, but it had a bit of ambiguity about whether that was a street I could walk down. It seemed to be well occupied by people. The locals had all the signs of occupation and bikes and signs and and it looked like there were shops and cafes and I don't it was earlier in the day so I don't even know whether they're open or not and they had this interesting grape trellis over the top. Hard light levels, overly bright in the background and very dark in the foreground, but quite a rich and interesting urban space that, you know, it's surprising you walk past it and turn left and all of a sudden you see this little funny little laneway. So we'll start with these two and we might do a couple more. Of the big funicular. And one of the things about this view, which is one of the many surprising views you get in a city, is that I was walking on the, what probably was close to a ridge line or close to the top of a hill, where the number 28 tram runs west out of the city and it climbs up and goes in these little valleys. And the streets are a little bit narrow because there are ridge lines, they bend a little bit as I vaguely recall. And I got to this point here and I looked to the left and saw this view. And I was quite taken by one, I could see water. And I know Lisbon is on the water, but I didn't really, wasn't really aware of that walking around the labyrinth of little streets in this part of the city. And it had this amazing um, funicular running up it. And it was also incredibly steep. Uh, so it's a really powerful urban image, the sorts of urbanism that would be quite difficult to today I suspect um, and what's interesting is when you talk to people in workshops about what they see um, it's the same sorts of things but there's nuances and slightly different viewpoints and I've begun to in trying to assist people in saying well what is it that, what is you're observing and they talk about a range of things and I say well you know what's the sort of drawing that best communicates that image and one of the techniques which um, seems to emerge from the, the um, this process um, and I hadn't really realized that when I started doing these these drawings is you know the first thing that we are really you know, quite intrigued by I suspect and you've got to get the proportions right is probably the you know the um, the narrowness of the space it's not a very wide space it's probably not more than six meters wide so if the space is relevant like i drew with plaza alfalfa recently we can just draw you know, and i'll do this a bit more carefully than the other one you get this nice space and you could you could actually accentuate that and say narrow nice spatial containment because the the issues of um, coming in and out of the buildings is not part of the discussion we don't need to show windows and doors and the like there is an awning on the left hand side here um, it's a retractable awning so I don't think it's for a commercial tenancy although I think there are some commercial tenancies strewing down this little little walkway, this little um, street as it were. So that's the first thing. And then in the distance, we can see the, the, the water and the hills on the other side. 
of the estuary. But before we get to that, we need to think about the architecture stepping in the hill, because clearly that's a key aspect of all this, of this, the quality of this scene. And this is a very tricky perspective to get right. And, and we're not trying to draw this as an accurate perspective. And, and I do say to people, don't try and draw it as a perspective. Don't use perspective as the only way to explain the idea. But certainly you can abstract a perspective with key lines and um, shapes, proportions, potentially. Um, but just to observe this image, we need to, and get the perspective right, we need to think about where our eye line is, where we're looking. And basically, the eye line will be above the water line. The water line is effectively, say, zero. Um, and then we're up a certain height above the water. And if I try to draw this in the corner here, we have the water is here. We're, you know, up here somewhere. And then there's these buildings that step up. And then there's more buildings down lower. And then there's the water. And then, then the hills through here. Now I don't recall whether the top of this hill over here is the same height as where we are, but the giveaway is that these lines here, the leading lines on the, the buildings, will run towards the horizon line. And that one runs down to there. That one runs down to there. These ones run over to here. So. You know, they're vanishing to a point somewhere around here. So I suspect that that point possibly is, is there. Um, doesn't seem to make sense to me in some respects in that the, um, because I can see this face of the building and this face of the building, the vanishing point really should be somewhere around here not over here because if it was over here we'd be it's not quite right so i don't exactly know um, where that vanishing point is and i might measure it later and just make some checks but you can see these lines running up and here and this looks about right where that comes through and cuts in around here somewhere and and these ones look like they might cut around there so that height there say is say that's there so if we're to just try and get the shape of the the buildings setting down the hill reasonably is that we just need to draw these lines coming you know to vanish into this and then this comes up high here and we need to get a tr the trace of this line running down the hill now um, this is also quite tricky in that this point here is where it's running to the vanishing point and it's also curving which doesn't help the, <laughs> the perspective easily uh, it's not a straight run but you know the vanishing point these are vanishing down here somewhere so there's you know somewhere around here say is a you know and so there's a it's coming up the hill like that and then these walls there's a series of buildings and they're vanishing down to and then you can see the ones below they're actually running up so that's running up and they're running down I hope that makes a semblance of sense and then there's more urbanism and stuff down through there and the train comes up there and if you wanted to we could draw in the vernacular. So this got slightly more complex than I was hoping for the uh, this discussion. It's not critical to get the perspective necessarily right, but when you're drawing diagrams and you're relying a little bit on on the perspective, um, you know, you can start to see now there's something not right through here. So I, I think I've mucked that up slightly. And that's got to come down more like that. So that's okay. There's shadows on here. Um, I'll just use my trusty blue blue pen for, for some shadows for the, pro, the process. And you can see down here there's little cuts. The light comes through where the streets are, which is quite a characteristic feature of the, the, 
a scene as well so we could in theory you know, run those in through there so now we can get an exact representation of where this this water is and then the hills in the distance and then there's you know more buildings and so for the sake of the diagram you know you might you know say well there's stuff in here that is it's part of the discussion but we've got a, a great sort of focal point of blue and accented color is actually a very helpful way to to um, to make all that make that work and I don't have a very light blue but the color of the sky is quite interesting it's, I think this is fairly early in the morning so I think there's a sort of touch of yellowy colors in there and then there's the and there's the um, the landscape so I don't know how I want to show that so we could say well that's possibly too much detail for a simple diagram and that could well be so you know it's not not difficult then to just you know, to, to try and redraw it very quickly you know, so there's no harm doing a practice one and then doing a you know from from that we can simplify it and distill it to make it make it simpler. There's probably some stuff down through there as well. And there's a bit of light on those buildings through there as well. This would be a quite a nice scene to 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 draw. Um, this is probably slightly too much like a picture, but as I said, we can potentially distill and pick up you know, the key the key elements. And it may be that the only bit of colour is about is the water. And, and you know, if we wanted to do some shading in through there. So as I said, we can go from that to that as a quick way to explain it. And the, these sections are quite nice because they do frame the space and communicate that, that sense of enclosure that is so um, you know, terrific in this interesting little corner of Lisbon. So the second image is this space, probably slightly wider than what the Vica Pernicola is, probably not much wider. And, and so often the section is does become the interesting part of the image and um, and I think in this case the interplay with the, the streets either side are, are quite important. Um, so there's signage and awnings. And there's signs and stuff and bicycles. plants as well I think and then above here is this sort of, there's a trunk that comes down comes down through there so again we can show this as solid and then in behind there there's probably some kind of ceiling so we could so the buildings don't need to be drawn as thicknesses of wall. You see those little balconies up on the top here, and maybe that's a relevant part of the story. Maybe it's not. If you think it is, you can try and draw those in there. Um, and and then of course the, the ground plane that comes through. And then there's other awnings in through there. So this is probably you know like a a picture of the to some extent but it's trying to be a bit more abstracted. And then there's the enclosure above.
don't be afraid to draw on, write on the drawings. You know, the words actually help to explain what what's happening, and then you can almost, you know, you could draw some other things, sort of in the distance potentially, with um, you know more awnings and other things and coming through. So you can start to create a a picture of what this this place might be. And of course, because there's some strong shadows in through here, you could possibly show the strong shadows and uh, that probably is coming up through there somewhere. It's quite bright above there, so maybe that's just on this side here. And if you wanted to, you could, you could do the perspective again. But you, yeah, you might say that there's a, a series of openings in through there that are the frontages and the like. So, looking to light. And then there's some sort of, I've lost the sign. So it's become a bit cluttered as the warnings. One of the things that's important with drawing is to try to give everything its own clarity and not um, be a bit more careful about how you do various things and don't, and it's part of the thing about trying to say too much. This is now getting a bit cluttered, a bit confused. I can't read the bicycle against the, the sign and, and everything. So that's not so good. But again, it can be redrawn and so there's a, a combination of the drawing and the thinking at the same time. And this is what design thinking drawing is. It's try to, as you think it through and talk it through, as I've been trying to do now, is to have the drawing process at the same time, which is part of the conversation in words is the summary in drawings. So, when I get back to Tokyo one day, it was quite amazing. <laughs>